Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. Today I am going to talk about one of the interesting security concept. It is CARS policy. CARS stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. Okay, first let's understand this term. What is CARS? Let me start with a very simple example. Let's say I own a house. I own some resource. So resource I refer to my house. Okay. Now say I want to rent my house. So what I can see is I don't want to rent it for everyone. I can have a selected set of people. The people can be my friends or my colleagues whom I can allow or who can stay in my house. Because I have some trust in those people, I can allow them to stay in my home. So it's like kind of a security which I add to my house, right? In addition to that, I can also add some more restrictions or some more security by saying you can use only certain allowed appliances in my home. In real life, if I say like this, no one would like to stay in my home. But I'm just saying that I can add security to my own resources. Okay, now let's talk about the Pega application. In Pega application, we have a resource, an API that is hosted under a URL. Okay, now this API can be consumed by different consumers. Whoever wants to consume, they can consume this API. But we can also add some security layer saying who can access my resource, which domain can access my resource by saying allowed origins. As you can see here, I allow two origins, two web applications that are hosted into those domain can access these APIs. So if I restrict like this, then other domains or other URLs, they can never access my API. They may get some course issue. Again, just note that this may not take effort if this API is getting called inside some Java code or at the backend logic. This happens with the browser specific web applications. In addition to origin, we can also have some more restrictions saying the allowed methods, the HTTP allowed methods. I can also control over that saying my resource, you cannot execute a delete method onto my resource. I can only provide access or I can only allow certain methods. I can say you can use only get method. That can be an example. So we have different types of configurations that can be done into a course setting. Okay, now let's go to Design Studio and see how we can secure our API using this course policy. I am using the Pega Community Edition here and Pega provides a rule, a special rule that is part of security category. If you scroll down there, you find cross origin resource sharing, right? Just open this rule. There you will find the out of the box rules or settings that are already configured into the Pega platform. As I can see, there are three things. One is the default. The other two are allow all origins and API headers. Okay, let's take a quick look allow all origins from the name itself i can say this is going to allow all the origins it's like there is no strict security added there are six main blocks allow credentials allow origins maximum age allow methods allow headers exposed headers till now in the introduction we only talked about two main fields right one is the allow origin the domain which is allowed to access or which is permitted as per this cross origin resource policy and here we are using wildcard character it means we allow all the origins the next is allowed methods and here we are allowing all the methods except the patch method i'll come to other blocks a little later okay now we have a cross origin resource sharing instance into pega platform how does this configuration gets mapped to an API or an endpoint, right? Because in Pega, we can host risk services using API endpoint, right? So there should be some mapping, like you should apply some course policy to special service APIs, right? How to do that is you go to configure and then integration services there you have endpoint course policy mapping. So you have to map your policy to the endpoint. I can already see the default mapping. You can see how the endpoint looks. These domains, right? The real Pega domain, we don't want to include because we can include only the resource path that is after the Pega's domain. That's why you don't want to mention the endpoint as HTTPS and then your domain name and then you specify. You don't need to do that. Just you can specify only the resource path. 
you can see all the api endpoints they have the course policy as api headers allowed right okay now you can also check that api headers allowed if you click it then again you are going to find the same kind of configurations there you see allowed origins it allows everything here it also allows the patch methods you have all the headers and then exposed headers as per this configuration what you find is all the apis can be accessed by any kind of domains or endpoints let me quickly show you using a simple example during the constellation course i already did some kind of starter pack installation so i'm going to use the same starter pack it means i have an application that is under localhost 3000 that can use the dx apis the pegas dx apis so that application is hosted under this all i have to do is just click on here then i get the login page remember this is a react starter pack kit from here if i hit start then it is going to prompt me the, the pegas login page and then it renders the pegas login screen into the react so here pega is a resource this is my local machine i hosted using ngrock and this is where the apis the dx apis are hosted this is another application which is trying to access the apis the pega apis let's see how it works let me give a start here meanwhile i'll also have the developer tools ready and then i'm just going to log in okay now there will be a lot of api calls made that is going to retrieve me the data as you can see already there are d work list the data apis are made i also see some pre-flight records right we also need to understand the term pre-flight that is related to car settings i see for all the apis the case types d work list d operator we have the pre-flight first and then we have the real asynchronous request so what is this pre-flight actually meant pre-flight is basically testing the connection are you allowed to access the resource that is why i say it is related to cars okay let's take an example of d underscore work list we have pre-flight connection and then we have the real get connection okay first pre-flight connection you see the request method is options here right and then the interesting thing is on the response headers if you look here you will find that it is allowing the origin localhost 3000 and also it allows all these methods you know where it comes from it comes from the out of the box api headers allowed just note i have now two pega editions one on my local machine and the other on the pega community and for the react starter i connected only to my local machine now i can update here and first verify the allowed origin let's say if i don't allow everyone i just delete this i'm doing this for the out of the box thing so just try it only in your local machine don't try it in your client environment i'm going to say so what will happen here definitely this is going to fail let me do a refresh and check you see already we got some error click on this error there you will find 403 403 is authorization error and course is related to the authorization if you go to the console there you will find that all this d work list d operator id everything is blocked by course policy because we don't have this in the response header okay now let's go to the network tab so what actually happened here is if you go to the failed one d underscore work list first look at the request header so in the request header we send the origin as localhost 3000 so this is our origin and in the response header what we see is this origin is not accepted that is why you don't find the access control allow origin the header field itself is not present because that is not accepted into the pega platform okay you can just quickly try it out again then it's going to work for sure you do this and then go to the network tab do a refresh come down you'll find that d work list don't have any error if you click here you'll also find now in the response headers you have access control allow origin now go to the request header you find the same kind of origin now we are clear we can control it using this allowed origins you can also try it for methods if you disable this get method definitely this is going to fail because it is trying to access get method and if we don't allow get method it's going to fail 403 error course policy will block that okay now did you note the second time we never had pre-flight request 
if I go back here and then see for the first time we had the pre flight records, right? The options method, these are all the pre flight things which happened at the first. But if you scroll down, you don't find any kind of pre flight because pre flight also it has some kind of cache. What, what is the cache is like? It maintains it for 10 minutes. The cache results are maintained. So maximum age you can also define. Okay, now what is the use of this pre-flight request? Let me show you that will explain the other blocks. If you go here and then look on the pre-flight request, as I told already, pre-flight request is just to check if you are allowed to access using the allowed origin, allowed methods, all those requests will be made and then in the response you will already know if you are allowed or not what i meant here is in the request header you see we are checking access control request header definitely i have to pass the authorization that's what it's checking access control request header this i have to check if it is allowed and then it is also trying to check method get if it is allowed and origin this is the origin and then in the response you get everything back you say get is allowed in addition to other methods get is allowed and then you also see headers are allowed in addition to authorization you have all these headers are allowed so where we configured all these headers we configured all these headers here so these are all the allowed http headers okay now the next question what is this exposed headers okay let me give you a small story cost policy was introduced at a certain year right before cost policy Whenever you want to access some resource that is hosted into a different server or a different domain, you can never access those HTTP headers. If you have some JavaScript and if you want to access those headers, you are not allowed to. Even with the course policy, inside JavaScript, you cannot just retrieve all those HTTP headers. If you want to specifically use some HTTP headers, then you have to specify it under this block. So this means these are all exposed headers that can be accessible from the accessing JavaScript code. For now, don't worry much. These are all the standard one. You can stick with the standard one. Only if needed, if you specify your own header field in your API and if that header field needs to be accessed by the consuming application, then very well you can use it under this exposed header. Usually in Pega, we don't update that much. Just understand these blocks. And finally, allow credentials. And allow credentials is basically to pass on some credentials. The credentials can be cookies or can be certificates, which can be passed to the consuming application. The JavaScript code can consume this resource only if they also include those credentials. So this you can configure only when needed. But the main restrictions with the cross origin resource sharing is on allowed origins. I hope I made it clear this cross origin resource sharing settings. And just remember that you can also apply the same kind of filters into on server level, on Apache Tomcat level. If you do that, that will override your configurations, whatever configurations you do it in Pega platform. So make sure if you have such settings, if you are running your application for long, maybe you may have that settings into the infra level. You can just remove that and have all your course policy into your own Pega platform. A short recap, you just need to do the configuration in two places, one under security, cross origin resource sharing and two on the configure, under the integration, under the services, you will have this endpoint mapping where you can map. So if you want to apply some course policy only to your own specific endpoint URL, you can very well define your entire endpoint URL, create your own course policy and apply only to it. I'll see you all in the next lecture.